everybody. Coming at you from out in the wilderness, and we have on the camera. Hey, oh. We have Nick. Now, today, this, it may not be as exciting as you would think it would be, but for me, it is extremely exciting because I have completely rebuilt the bug out bicycle. Bug out bushcraft camping bicycle. And now, this is going to take some little explaining. You're going to have to bear with me because you may be like, well, why did not you just buy a bicycle cart? Well, carts are low and they won't go through creeks and they're expensive. They're not homemade. Now, five years ago, some of you may remember, this was the bicycle that it had these two rails right here mounted up here with one wheel in the back. All right, I decided it was time for a rebuild because you could put one duffel bag on it, but you couldn't turn, and I got tired of not being able to turn. So let me, we're gonna dissect this for a minute, but before I do this real quick, I wanted to say that, like, for example, you have a duffel bag here, and if you wanted to, you could wear a backpack, but sometimes backpacks aren't easy to wear while you're riding a bicycle. Now, let's say you're riding along the trail and you stop and you want to get off and you want to hike somewhere and you want to maybe see, is this where I want to camp or whatever? Well, I'm always preaching about survival kits. Well, on the back back here, you just simply undo this bungee cord and pull this off, and there you go. There is your butt pack survival kit. So that, you know, I'm gonna walk off here into the woods and if, in case I get turned around, I've got my kit, okay? So that was one thing I wanted to talk about. Now, let's take this other part off and let's talk about it. I got two bungee cords, two carabiner bungee cords, because these are always handy for everything. People that's watching my videos, you know I love these things. So you got a couple of them, and then you've got a duffel bag full of all kinds of good stuff in here. Now, here's the nuts and bolts of this trailer, all right? Let me scoot this thing over a little bit. Now, if you look at it carefully, there, the evolution of this thing is these rails were like this with these mounts, and it had one bicycle wheel right in the center, and this was mounted up here, all right? Well, what I wanted to do is I detached it and I put this mount on here, and then I had this rod joint, also known as a hime end, and then I put two wheels on it. Well, when I did that, this thing would wobble real bad, but I wanted it high up. Hey, you're missing the rescue plane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're near an airport. There's we'll always... Point, I would point y'all up to look at that, but the sun's right there. Yeah, I don't want to the blind everybody. But anyway, I wanted this thing high up with large wheels so that I could go through a creek. And the fact that this thing wobbled a lot is because the wheels were narrow, but I didn't want the wheels wide. I wanted everything as narrow as could be so I could make my way through the woods and not have to stick to the trails. So one thing led to another and one pivot point wouldn't work. So I thought, how about two pivot points? It'll keep this thing straight and in line. So what I had to do is I had to mount this lower one, but then I realized if these two are solid mounted, it wouldn't be able to pivot. So I solid mounted the bottom rod joint and the top one, if you look here, see, look at that. It does that. And also, watch this. As I'm going over hills, see that? That's what it does. And you can see how this is solid mounted rod joint right here that pivots. And this slides up and down on this and slides in here. So watch this action. See? As I'm going over hills, yep. it raises up here and goes in and out here. You see that one down there remains stiff? Yeah, that one remains stiff. Isn't that neat? That's probably just as, just as much room as I need. Alright, so that's that. Now, let's move on to a couple of more uh, features of this thing that I've decided to build in. But, like I said, the, the main idea is to be able to carry 
a duffel bag full of, full of gear here. In the future, I might could utilize this, but for now, I think this will work. Right. Now, part of the beauty of having a bicycle and a trailer is the fact that you can carry a lot more than you're willing to carry as a backpacker. And so I got to thinking about it as I built this, and I put this part on here for the duffel bag. I got to thinking about after I did the extra pivot point, then I thought, I'm going to have a space under here. So I thought, why don't I utilize that with something? Well, I got to thinking even further. Anybody can always use a nice shovel. All right, but who's going to backpack that in? So I've got this shovel here. And anybody could use a nice bow saw. And so this bow saw right here has a brand new blade on it. And then I've put this cover on it here, and it's held on by this thing. So that's a 30-inch bow saw. You're not going to backpack that in, but if you've got it, that is wonderful. And then, of course, anybody can use a nice machete. And the way I've got this thing done, let's see if I can undo this. Uh, yeah, I got that carabiner right there. Two hours later. Two hours later. See, what you do is, you see, you got a nice machete right there that, without having to carry it on your backpack or in your belt. And the way I've got that thing put in, as I wrap this around, and then I grabbed it with this carabiner here. That way it won't, it won't slide out. I actually should have put an extra wrap around it. Yeah, I should have put an extra wrap around it. But anyway, the basic idea is, these are tools that I don't use that often. They're kind of like extras, but they're very, very handy to have. So I wanted to leave these with the trailer. So I came up with a bag. Take a look at that. I got a bag with a couple of straps right here. These are adjustable straps that I've sewn on. So let's take a look at this. How about if we take a bow saw? And how about if we slide this bow saw in, let's get it started. And then let's take a shovel. Let's get our shovel started in here. Let's see. All right, so let's get that thing slid in there. And then let's take our machete and let's drop it in there. <laughs> now let's take all three of these and let's just slide these things down in there. How about that? All right, and then let's fold it over. Now here's the thing, these tools, <coughs> you don't really Excuse want me. them. You don't really want them wet. You don't want the cover wet, you don't want the tools wet. But if they do get wet, like if you drive through a creek, it's not the end of the world, all right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these things here and let's slide this forward. Let's see what we can do here. Come over here where you can see a top in See top underneath here? here, here's an axle and here's a rod and it's got kind of a V there. So let's take these and let's just slide these up under here. And let's set those right there. All right. Then we're gonna take this and we're gonna clip that carabiner on right there and then I'm gonna run this over now wait a minute let me put this back here and then let's give this a pull come around and clip it here now see this thing is held in beside in between here and it's taking up this space that normally wouldn't be used and if I, if I don't need this stuff, it's not that big of a deal because it's not taking up any extra space. And But I now have with me a shovel, a bow saw, and a machete. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. All right. So, take your duffel bag now. You've got your duffel bag. Whatever you want on it. Just dump it right there. Uh, you can take... I have a small sleeping bag in there and shelter and cooking items and whatever other stuff that I need. But if you think about it, you can put your really, really lightweight stuff, like if you had an extra sleeping bag or blanket, you can mount it on the top or maybe in the future mount something here. So, now let's put our survival kit back on here. 
And all you do with that is you drop that belt on. See where it's hanging? Let's get around here and take a look at that. Right. See how I just took that? It's got these rods. And see how I just drop that? Yep. All I do now is lift it up and hold it on with my knee. And then I grab these bungees and pull them. And I got my survival kit mounted on. Isn't that neat? Yeah. All right. So now let's experiment with a couple of other things that I want to talk about. All right. Uh, just for the heck of it, let's see how this thing turns around, how easy it is, how much trouble it is. So I just grab the bike, let's turn it around, and there we go. Because you're really just lifting up the bike and the rest of it's just kind of pivoting on its own. Just, just, just lift up the bike. Nothing to it. Now let's say, for example, I want to go off exploring, but I'm not ready to set up camp. So let's just run this thing off trail and kind of hide it. Now the greatest test. How well can you deal with getting branches in the face? Alright. So what we're going to do, since I'm going to go exploring, we're going to take our survival pack off. We're going to put it on. Let's undo this cover. I thought you were going to actually ride it through the woods right here. Oh, no. I'm just trying to see. <laughs> so I was thinking, now time to test how do you deal oh, we with... We will do that. We will ride it through the woods. How do you deal with getting branches in the face? This is like... I don't know. This is an area I don't think I would ride through. You just roll it. Yeah, I would roll it through this area. There's some other areas I would, but this has got too many holes and hills and tree tree limbs and stuff that I really I don't think I would go through an area like this. Hey, I know what you ride. You should ride through. What? You should ride through. It'll be on camera. That right there. What? That's yeah, not. I that's ride that's those. not happening. I'll see how this looks. I think I saw a spot earlier that's even denser on trees that uh, you probably couldn't even wheel it through. Probably not. You might could duck around through it, but you're not really going to get the bike through it. No. All right, now how about, the, how about that? Put some yeah. stuff on it. <laughs> How about that? How that look? Yeah. All right. So now we're going to go exploring. All right. All right. Let's see if anyone can spot the bike in the woods. All right. Pan it slowly. Anything? What about this way? Anything? Well, where is it? Yep, it's there. It's actually kind of hard to spot the bike by itself because of the paint job. All right, so let's say that we're pushing this bicycle off the trail into the woods and we're going to set up camp. All right. 
We got our bicycle here. Goes to rescue, searching for us again. Yeah, she's been out here for three months now. All right, so let's take that off. Now let's say we're gonna get all our stuff out there, and we're gonna set our camp up right there. All right. There's our survival kit. That's got some stuff we're gonna need for spending the night. So let's take these. Attach this, attach this. Now, come over here a minute. We're gonna undo one right here. All you do is undo a wing nut. All right, then you pull off the little brass washer. You don't wanna lose it, but there's one underneath it if you need it. So let's just lift that up. Set it down. Yeah, it kind of acts as a kickstand too sometimes. Yeah, it kind of does, but depending on how hilly this thing is. Sometimes it acts as a kickstand and sometimes it makes it fall over. Sometimes. <laughs> Depends All on right. how you position it. If we need our shovel, machete, or saw, we're going to get it off of here. All right. But let's say that we set up our camp over there stealth wise. Well, what do we do with this bicycle frame? Let's just take it and let's just throw it right here. Lay it on the side. Let's get some camo out and put the camo on it. And then we're going to deck out the bicycle because, say, we want to go scouting or go fishing. We want something with us on that bicycle. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. All right, so what we have is more camo mesh, but this is the brown that matches the forest floor. So we're going to drag some of this over. Let's cover this up. Because let's say we're going to set up one of Nick's famous cam camo shelters. You won't be able to see that. But we will need to hide this thing. Just like that. Alright, maybe a couple like that. Now what we're going to do is on this bicycle, we don't want to lose, what is that? Yuck. What? There's something gooey and disgusting on it. I don't know what we picked <laughs> up. Alright, so, this bicycle, let's say we're going fishing. And later on, I'm gonna, I am going to mount some sort of a holder back here somehow for a fishing rod. But what we want to do... That's not going to snag on trees. It's, it's, this is all a work in progress. Now this thing, it'd probably be a good, that'd probably be a good length right there to have fishing poles that could uh, break down. Yes, and that's what I'm going to work on. Now here's the thing, okay? We're going to have our campsite so camoed up that if we can't find it back, if we can't find it or if we can't find our way back, we're going to have a kit with us on a bicycle. Now I have no idea what this little pouch is. But it's got two Velcro pockets. So on one side, I got a tarp. All right, Velcro shut. And then on the other side, I have a bivy sack. All right, so that if I have to lay on the forest floor, bugs won't eat me alive. Now the way this thing works, it's got Velcro. And I got these from the bargain bin, so I don't even know the proper name of these things. I don't even know what this is. I, I, I assume it is a bicycle bag. All right, so we're going to throw that on. And then everybody knows about this. This is a Molly canteen kit. We've got a two-quart canteen with a cup and then a couple of little Altoids tins on the sides. So if we get separated from our camp, between this and this, we should be able to survive in comfort. So... You undo these buckles and you just slide this on the handlebars just like that. Just like that. All right, now, just for the sake of argument, let's just act like, okay, our camp is set up. Let me run this thing over there. Let's 
got like a light color. All right, so for the sake of that, we got our camo shelter set up hidden, and then over here we've got our trailer hidden. So now we're just going to ride through the woods back out to the trailer. Alright, so we've rode away from camp looking for rescue, looking for food. We've come back. And where is camp and our bike trailer? See if you can find it. Anything? See it yet? This one can definitely remain hidden from actually laying on its side versus the whole, the whole setup being upright. Now let's see real quick how this thing goes back together. What you want to do is you want to just get that started, right? You want to get that started and then slide all the way forward and then drop that on. Put on the brass washer, put on the nut, and then load it up and you're ready to go. Pretty simple, pretty effective, but still gives it some suspension. Still gives it a little bit of movement. Almost lost a duffel bag. <laughs> Slide it all the way to the back. Now sometimes this thing falls over. Yeah, I'm seeing it's a little tipsy. Yeah. Depends on how it's standing. If you turn, if you when you, I noticed that when you turn the the trailer down there, yeah. that'll actually, depending on which way it's falling, you turn it the opposite way and it'll. Keep it from falling over. Well, this is brand new. I only rode it in a yard. I haven't rode it in the woods yet, so there's a learning curve here. So let's take this. We're all loaded back up now. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> it's because of where it was sitting. Here, grab that. Let's pick it up. Oops. Yeah, it can be tipsy of where it's sitting. Let's see if I can see it. Park it right here. Nope, see? See, you gotta, you gotta turn the trailer. Or turn the bicycle. The, well, yeah, that works too. It might be the other way. I don't know. There's a certain spot. See that right there? Something's pulling it over. Oh, well, let's take it for a ride. See, initially it had some bad wobble problems, but that looks pretty solved now. This is bumpy terrain. All right, now check this out. Oops, Come here. Sun glare. <laughs> Come over here, right here beside me for a minute. This is the ultimate test of the narrowness of this. Come on up here a minute. Okay. See those two little trees? Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can fit through them. Have <laughs> fun. It may be a big, and it's a hill. So let's see if we can go up through that because 
this is the whole idea you know everybody's gonna be like all oh, the wheels need to be wider well if I can learn to ride this thing the way it is I can put this bicycle almost anywhere and I'm gonna re-gear it with a, another gear so I'm gonna put another sprocket on there so that I can pedal 20 times and just barely move <laughs> and I think that's what I'll need all right so let's see if we can make it through there Yeah, you need the lower gears. Well, now I'm pretty split. The rear tire was going. See, the rear wheel was slipping. Because it's so muddy. Yeah, the more, the more we go this direction, the more kind of swampy it gets. I thought some more of the camera's going to shake because I'm swatting insects. <laughs> <laughs> now the vines are getting too bad. Now let's see if we can turn this thing around. Oh, hey, we're in that section I was talking about. What? Yeah, you're not riding it through that or even toting it through that. Oh no, there ain't no water. No. This right here. That, um... That, that goes far back of this. You're not... No, that's that's finding another way around. Yeah, you won't even hike through that. All right, now let's see if we can back it up. Now, I mean, you might can sleep in, sleep in there, because uh, at first it feels pretty camouflaged. Might keep things away. Yeah. Now let's see if we can make it back out of here. But... You could find a spot that you could go through the woods like this and get way off the trail. Now, if you're going to spend one or two nights, this ain't necessary. But if you're going to spend a week or two or set up an elaborate shelter, it'll be worth it. But I can tell now I need to change that rear tire and I need to re-gear it lower. So let's see if we can get out of here. Looking pretty steady. I don't, I don't run into too many vines. But I mean, it didn't fall over, and that's the main thing. That's the main thing that matters. You know? Yeah. And then the other thing, the other main thing I say that matters is that heavy load you're carrying is on this right. and not oh, your back. back. Think about, like, just depending on how much you're carrying, think of how much energy you're saving by just putting the load yeah, off on that. I'm just rolling everything. Good spider web. <coughs> See, I could do this. Look at what I'm rolling through. Look at what I'm rolling through, Nick. I just roll big vines and rubs and scrubs. I know, and I'm filming through it. Oh, we're not many things are crawling on me now because we decided to take the the uh, special route. See, that's it. That is it. Now, see that thing sitting. That thing is sitting nice. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. I wonder how many of our rears are going to throw up from being disoriented during that last scene. I don't know. But it uh, proved this point. This was a test. And see, so you got your survival kit here. You got your long-term tools. You got your camping gear. And you got another survival kit. So, really, what more could you ask for? But What's the vines hanging down? Yeah. But I won't always attempt to go through stuff like that. But as tall as this is, and as narrow as it is, I believe it's dual... dual pivot point is the key. I think it worked great. So, and Nick can attest to how many weeks and how many late nights I spent out there working on this thing. Yeah, I rode this when it was a little more er in the early stages and uh, the trailer 
with and without anything on it would uh, cause it would just completely fall over. The bike wouldn't fall over, but the trailer would fall over. Yeah, it would just fall over but, to the side. You know, now going up this uh, beaten path right here, uh, barely wobbles any, and then going over the, all that hilly terrain over there. Yep. Um, then this still doesn't look like it's gonna fall over. Yep. Now I did a camouflage job on what I added on the bike, and I did a camouflage job on the trailer, but I didn't flat black this wheel yet because I wanted you to see. This is not a steel wheel. This is a high quality wheel off a of mongoose bike. It's out lightweight aluminium. And every bit of this is all very thin aluminum aluminium tubing because this was originally a came from a uh, table and chairs off a deck. <laughs> it's just some real thin stuff. And these blocks are plastic. The only steel on it is all the nuts and bolts and the, the rod ends. So, I mean, the trailer itself is very lightweight. So, anyway, that's it. Uh, <clears throat> I really like this outfit. Uh, once I put this other gear on it, make it a 21 speed. Because I think it's a, I think it's a 16 right now. But I'm going to put another sprocket on it make it a 21 speed so that I can have a really low gear. It's going to be great. So, oh, no, on my 21 speed, you put it on low, as low as it goes. You're not going to move very far, but you're going straight up. It, no. It's easy. Oh yeah, it ain't like it ain't like we're going to be, you know, driving like maniacs through the woods. <laughs> and I might yeah. check into some kind of a paddle tire for the back here, because it did spin in those muddy spots. In a dry spot, I don't think it's spin. Anyway, hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, till then. Uh, more of this to come in the future as I learn it and I experiment with it. You're, you're seeing it first time deal. <laughs> and we shall see you in the next one. See you later.